Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. I welcome you to today's lesson in science on the topic vegetable crop production. So why do we need to learn vegetable crop production? In the past, human beings depended on wild fruits and vegetables for survival. Today, because of civilization or modernization and high population groups, crops are cultivated to feed people. So there are a lot of people around the population of the world has increased and now crops need to be produced at a large scale. So in order to achieve maximum yield and to protect the environment, certain laid down rules have been put in place for crop production. So now the demand for food has increased. So meaning that when you're producing crops, you need to produce in large quantities and certain rules must be followed and adhered to for that to be successful. So there are principles in crop production and these principles must be adhered to for a successful crop production and in this lesson we'll be tackling three of those land selection, selection of varieties, method of propagation. The rest will be treated in the subsequent lessons. So there are about seven principles in crop production, land selection, selection of varieties, method of propagation, cultural practices, pests and disease control, harvesting and storage, processing and marketing. Now the first and foremost option that needs to be considered is land selection. Land selection is the first option to be considered when one decides to cultivate a particular food crop. This is because all the different food crops require a particular soil type to grow. For example, maize requires a well-drained loam soil to grow, whilst granite requires sandy loam soils. Coconut prefers deep, free draining, clay loams, while oil palm grows best in loamy soil which are fertile. Therefore, the land or the land type should show you what type of crop you need to grow or the type of crop you need to grow to show you what land type you need to go in for. So crops either survives or die depending on the type of soil used. The next step you need to consider in the when during crop production is selection of varieties. Now when cultivating a particular crop, you need to be able to select your varieties very well in terms of seeds. Because crop, crop variety refers to the different types of particular crop grown for various reasons. For example, cassava has many varieties. There are those that are grown for their high starch content for industrial purposes and those with little starch used in making gari. So depending on the type of crop production you are going in for, then you should know which type of variety you'll be going in for so for instance cassava if you want to go in for an industrial crop production you are likely to use cassava that is high in high in starch and it's for a local purpose you are likely to use cassava that has little starch the next step you need to consider is method of propagation Method of propagation refers to the mode in which new plants are, let's say, created using parts of plants. So we have two main types of propagation. We have propagation by seeds, which is also known as the sexual type of propagation. 
sexual type of propagation and propagation by vegetative structures is known as asexual so let's look at propagation of seeds we are usually familiar with propagation of seeds because in our previous lessons we learned that in order to go plants you need to disperse seeds so disperse all of seeds and this helps in the germination of new plants so this is the basic idea we know so it's simple you just either disperse your seeds on the soil or dig a, a small hole and then put your seed into them let's look at propagation by vegetative structures so propagation by vegetative structures simply refers to the type of propagation in which new plants grows from any portion of an old one other than the seed so apart from the seed you can make new plants germinate or arise by using part of the plants so we have two types of propagation vegetative propagation so when it comes to vegetative propagation we are looking at using part of the plant it could be the stem the root or the leaf for producing another new plant so vegetative propagation there are two types we have the natural vegetative propagation and we have the artificial vegetative propagation so vegetative propagation has two types natural and artificial so we have artificial vegetative propagation and natural vegetative propagation so let's look at natural vegetative propagation so natural vegetative propagation we also have kinds we have the leaf bud type we have the suckers type we have the runners type and the underground stems we will look at all of them so for the leaf bud type what happens is that when you have a leaf When you have a leaf, certain things grow. So when a leaf fall, fall off, a, a plant that is able to reproduce itself using the leaf bud method, when the leaf falls off on the soil, you realize that certain things grow at the side of the leaf. And this is what we call the bud. And this bud has leaf like structures and some structures that look look like roots and these roots is what we call adventitious roots this root is what we call the adventitious the adventitious roots they are not they look like roots but they are not real roots an example is what we have here adventitious roots okay so the leaf bud is a type of natural vegetative propagation through or by using the leaf another type of veg natural vegetative propagation is the suckers and an example is what we have here is a circus type of natural vegetative propagation and in the circus type you realize that there are lateral branches with terminal buds which go from the base of the underground stems of certain plants so an example of plants that use this method or examples of plants that use this method are pineapple pineapple banana and plantain and plantain so 
So these are examples of plants that use the circle type. And an example is what we have here. So let's look at the runner type of vegetative propagation. And an example is what we have here. So the runner type, they are stems that go horizontally above the surface of the ground. So you realize that on the surface of this floor, there are stems that go horizontally above them. And then you can see the adventitious roots and the new plants also growing. These are new plants. So these are new plants. These are new plants. And the adventitious roots is this. This is a, a new plant. And the adventitious roots are the small, small roots going deep into the soil. So this is the runner type because the, the name suggests the method of its propagation it runs through it runs through and examples of plant that use the runner type we have strawberry we have sweet potato this plant or this plants use the natural the runner type of the natural vegetative propagation or reproduction let's look at the underground stem type so the underground stem type usually there are plants whose stem lie below the soil surface and they are modified to store food to support the new plants when they grow from the modified plants they also have scales or scaly leaves and also they have adventitious roots so types of underground stems we have about four types we have what we call the rhizome and rhizome is a group of plants which propagates using using the underground stem type and an example, a typical example is ginger. A typical example is ginger. So this is the stem which grows below the soil. And this is the these are the adventitious roots. We also have bulbs. This is also a group of plants that grow using this method. And a typical example is onion 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 is an example of a bulb plant which go using the underground stem natural vegetating vegetative propagation we also have combs combs and a typical this is also a group of plants which go using the underground vegetate underground stem type and a typical example is cocoyam cocoyam a typical example is cocoyam okay and the last is stem tuber this is also a group stem tuber This is also a group of plants that go using the underground stem vegetative propagation. And an example is a tuber of yam. A tuber of yam. So these are all types of the underground vegetative, underground stem natural vegetative propagation. And so these are the natural ways by which plants are able to reproduce themselves. In our next lesson, we'll be looking at the artificial ways and the other principles of crop production. I've given some assignments, some exercises, and I hope this video will help you to be able to answer them. Until our next lesson, 
Stay safe. Bye-bye.